Hello, Frizzle Force. The Vorkosigan Saga is a series that has some interesting kind of internal tension, because a majority of the books are narrated by a character named Miles, and I read most of those at this point, and a handful of the books in the series, including the first one that was written, are narrated by Miles's mother, Cordelia. So the entire time I've been reading all the other books in this series, Cordelia, the mother, has been popping in and out, being awesome every time, being emotionally intelligent and strong and a great mentor, but you can tell that she's not quite perfect. And I kept thinking, like, I am so excited to get to the Cordelia books. And then everyone in my comment section is like, I can't wait till you get to the Cordelia books. You're going to love them so much. And I have finally read two of them. And guys, I loved them. And also I have some criticisms I'd like to share of them. It's a mixed reaction for me. So let's start out with what I loved most about these books, Shards of Honor and Barry R, which is the romance between Cordelia and Errol Vorkosigan. Here is the premise of Shards of Honor. Cordelia is the captain of an exploratory ship going to unknown planets in the galaxy and trying to figure out their ecosystem. Errol, on the other hand, is the captain of a military exploration ship from a completely different planet. And both of their missions end up running into each other. And things quickly spiral and a fight breaks out between these two groups. And in the end, once all the dust settles, the two groups have retreated. And they have both retreated without their captains. <laughs> so it's Cordelia and Errol from enemy planets, from groups that just attacked and killed each other, stranded together on a somewhat deadly alien planet having to play survivor with one another. And when I say that I love like an enemies to lovers storyline, this is the kind of style of it that I love. Which is where at the beginning, the two characters, they aren't enemies and hate each other just because they're awful people to each other. They're enemies and hate each other because they have a lot of preconceived notions about each other and the groups that they're coming with, and they are politically enemies. And then as they spend more and more time together, they start to actually getting to know each other and finding deep respect for each other. And that is where the love springs from. That despite this harsh environment of hate between their two planets, between their two surveys, teams, love can bloom anyway because they're just such good matches for each other. I loved all the scenes of them getting to know each other, of them working together with each other, of them slowly opening up and telling stories of their past mistakes with each other. Like, it's just so emotionally honest and tender. And I ship them so strongly. And then eventually they're both rescued and get to go back with their respective teams. And yet their planets are kind of um beginning a war with each other. And they're both now on opposite sides. And so they keep like circling each other and running into each other and running into people that they know from meeting each other, kind of like orbiting each other in these ways where every time they meet, they're like, I still love you, but we can't quite be together yet because of, you know, these circumstances we're in. Like they're committed enough to each other that they will hope for a future together. But they're not quite committed enough to each other to like, rebel against their home planets. And that dynamic throughout the book is like melancholic and entertaining and just so juicy. So my love for the romance, both on the character side and the plot development side, is why I love this book enough to give it five stars. But it was a close thing for this book. I almost gave it four stars. I do think that there's several things in this book that I really didn't like as much, and now it's time to get into those. And I know I sound a little crazy right now, like, Chloe, you gave this book five stars and now you're launching into a rant about the things you didn't like about it? Yes. <laughs> I, I can do that with any book I read, no matter if I love it or hate it. I love analyzing books, and that includes picking apart the things that I think could have been done better, even if I'm obsessed enough with the book to give it five stars, you know? So like, first of all, the romance desperately needed Errol Vorkosigan's perspective. These two books are entirely told from Cordelia's perspective, and it is such a loss of opportunity here. And when I'm talking about the plot of Barry R. the next book, I'll get into more details of how I think Errol's perspective could have really been utilized. But even here in Shards of Honor, Errol is going through some heavy stuff. He has grown up in a society that is quite sexist and tells him that women cannot lead military teams, that women cannot be captains, that women cannot be competent in that way. And then now he's getting to know a woman that he has quite a big crush on who is all of those things and he adores her for it. And you can tell in the background of this book, in his mind, he's going through a lot of mental work to readjust himself to this new way of seeing women. And I think adding that story and that perspective to this novel could have made it so much stronger and richer, especially because in their romance, Errol 
is often the one making the move. He's the one, he's the one declaring his love for Cordelia. He's the one proposing. He's the one that is really trying to make it happen and make it work. By nearly every metric, Errol is a more active character than Cordelia. And I think that that means that he should be one of our protagonists and narrators here. Because that's going to be a side of the story that's going to be easy to follow and root for, at least for me, because he is making these big moves to move the plot forward. But the thing about this novel, Shards of Honor, that I think can really be improved with just little changes is the ending. So by the end of this book, Cordelia has gone back to her home planet, Beta Colony. After her grand tour of the universe, getting into various shenanigans with the Barriarans and the war and all of the things, she's back home. And she is ready to take some time off, to rest, and then while she is there, she gets into a mess. But this problem for Cordelia on Beta Colony with the way that people are treating her keeps escalating and escalating until Cordelia is like, I cannot live here anymore. And so Cordelia flees Beta Colony to go to Barriar, where her love Errol Vorkosigan is, and settles down with him. And I think that this decision was so weak. Because instead of Cordelia deciding, this is what I really want, I am running to Barriar. I'm running to Errol Vorkos again. The entire experience is framed as her running from. She cannot stay on Beta Colony any longer. And Barriar is just like, well, I guess it's the last chance I have, the only other planet that will take me. And it's just so sad that after a book of Cordelia being strong and awesome and making big, tough decisions, the end of the book, isn't her vanquishing an enemy and reveling in her success. The end of the book is her retreating from an enemy, is her giving up in a way. And I just feel like it really cheapens her character and leaves the book on kind of a sizzling haphazard note. And before I jump into talking more about what happens in the sequel, Barry R, I want to talk more about the general ideas these two books are playing with. Because these books are very much about Beta Colony versus Barry R, about this culture clash and differences between these two planets. Now, Beta Colony is founded on the ideas of logic and democracy. Most of the time, this works out perfectly. Beta Colony is honestly hands down the superior planet in nearly every metric. <laughs> However, occasionally they take the democracy and logic a little too far and get in the way of actual happiness of people. As Cordelia learns in the end of the book Shards of Honor, where her problem on Beta Colony is kind of founded in those principles. Barry R, on the other hand, has a political system and culture that is founded on like loyalty and trust. And most of the time, this doesn't work out the best. Like, it, they kind of make it work, but it's definitely a system founded on, like, feudalism, and as soon as you get a corrupt lord in there, everything falls apart really quick. But sometimes having a culture and a political system that is so founded on the ideas of trust and loyalty can actually work out well for people, is a system that is flexible enough to provide exceptions when people need it. And these books, Shards of Honor and Barry R, are really playing with these ideas and putting these two planets in juxtaposition and contrast and comparison with each other, because we get to see both the great parts of Beta Colony and the bad parts of Beta Colony. We get to see both the great parts of Barriar and the many bad parts of Barriar. And that is also intermixed in part of the romance between Cordelia and Errol. Because Cordelia is in part attracted to Errol because she sees what is missing from her planet sometimes. And then Errol, on the other hand, is looking at her Baden culture and is looking at that logic and democracy and that is what he knows that his planet is missing. That sense of fairness and equal justice is what he is craving in his life. So now let's talk about the plot of the next book, Barriar. So in Barriar, Cordelia is now settled down as the wife of Errol Vorkosigan. And Errol is heavily involved in local politics. That is his job, he is busy, he is go, go, go doing things. And Cordelia, meanwhile, is left behind, just kind of puttering around, making missteps in barrier and culture and making friends with the house staff. And that is like two thirds of this book. It's just Cordelia being passive. It's just Cordelia thinking, oh, I kind of want to do something here, but I don't want to get in the way of Errol's politicking. I know he's got it handled. I'll just trust him and stay at home and be pregnant. And that made this book uh, not as good as the first one. <laughs> she isn't really making decisions for herself. She isn't really important to the plot. She's just reacting to things that are happening to her husband. And this is another reason why I would have loved to get Errol's perspective through these books, because he is having to make so many hard and emotional decisions through all of this. And just getting his chapters in here would have helped the flavor and the pacing of this section so much. 
Now that was the first two thirds of this book. I was feeling like four stars about this book. Like I really love the characters. I love the writing style. I love this world. I was engaged, but it, it was missing a good chunk of the spark that I needed to be obsessed with it. And then the last third of this book happened where Cordelia was finally like, I am done being so passive. I am so frustrated with this. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And she does in the most dramatic, extravagant way and she just takes control of the plot and at the end I was just stunned like wow that was so girl boss like I can't even process how much awesomer Cordelia suddenly got. And that awesomeness was always inside of her but it wasn't until it was finally unleashed that this book became really entertaining you know. So there I am finished with the book and the first two thirds of it kind of boring feeling like four stars three stars and then the ending I really liked it feeling like five stars and then I was asking myself like okay what do I rate this book what star rating overall encapsulates my feelings on this novel and I was going back and forth and kind of feeling more of a four than a five overall and I was kind of trying to like reason it out with myself like what would have made this book a five. Well, maybe if Cordelia had had more character development. Well, and then I thought, oh, I really want to reread the beginning of this book or just like the entire book and really paying attention to the way that Cordelia is changing and growing in frustration and courage in the way that she deals with this political situation. And, and that's when I knew I had to give this book five stars because if I am itching to reread a book as soon as I've finished it, that's an automatic five stars from me. I'm oftentimes, I feel like a little stingy with my ratings. I don't give a lot of books five stars and the ones I do are oftentimes rereads. So I always like to round up when I can and that is what gives Barry R its five stars. That if I am craving rereading a book as soon as I finished, that just gets it an automatic five star, no matter what other problems I might have had with that book. And I think at the core, what I appreciate most about this novel, Barry Yar, isn't necessarily the awesome girl boss moment, though that is my favorite moment of it all. But it's more like the larger political landscape that Cordelia is navigating through. That she is from this culture that is very much democracy and logic, and then she's bringing some of that with her as she immigrates to Barry Yar, but she's also finding new ways to embrace Barry Yar and culture. Where in nearly every interaction Cordelia has with someone, she is in some way trying trying to convince them to be a little less Barriaran, a little less prejudiced or sexist or ableist. She wants to be able to call this planet her home, but she knows that it's a little bit of a fixer-upper and she's willing to put in that work. And at the same time, you see her adopting more and more Barriaran things, where sometimes it's nice for someone to just be able to take your word for something and not need like logic and evidence to back it up every single time. And in that way, almost every scene in this book can be looked at as both a character study of Cordelia as she changes and becomes more Barriaran, and a culture study of Barriar as a whole and how it's changing in reaction to Cordelia. One of the things that's really been on my mind as I've been reading these two novels is where would I put them in my series recommended reading order? Because that's a video that I am planning on making. I haven't been reading this series according to anyone's recommended reading order really. I've just been picking up the books that I'm interested in in the moment. In this series, has a lot of different recommended reading orders by both the author and different fans because there's a lot of different orders you can read this series in and get different but just as valid and interesting and fun experiences with. But in all the reading order opinions that I've looked at, oftentimes these books, Shards of Honor and Barry R, are the recommended starting place. I'm not like arguing that it's a bad starting place, but I don't think I would put these books at the beginning. And my reasons for that lie in how these books interact with the rest of the books in the series. So first, one of the things I noticed at the beginning of Shards of Honor, it's not like a good beginning spot for the world building wise, like it's not stopping to explain anything to you. And that's true of any books in the series. You start anywhere in the series and it's going to be about the same experience. So like if you're looking for a book that has an easy on ramp, I'm sorry, there just isn't one. So if you're looking for a book that's an easy on ramp in into the lore and map and cultures and mechanics of the jump points in the series. Sorry, you're not going to find one. <laughs> but what I loved 
about reading these books, Cordelia's books, after reading several books by her son is that it provided so much more attention and surprises in these books. Because when Miles is mentioning his parents, when he's talking about the adventures that they've gotten up to, he doesn't have the full picture. But even after reading so many Miles books and getting to know his parents in that capacity, I was still so shocked by some things that happened in these books. And honestly, if I had just started out with these books, the things wouldn't have been as shocking. It's just like events that are happening in the story. But because the things that are happening are sometimes so different from the story we've gotten in the later books, it like adds an extra surprise and plot twist feeling to these simple reveals. And having already read the Miles books, it also adds more dramatic tension and suspense to Cordelia's books. Because some pretty tragic things happen to Cordelia and Errol as newlyweds. And if you've read the Miles books first, you know that Miles is born crippled due to some toxic gas incident. And so when I'm reading the book and Cordelia is pregnant, I am on the edge of my seat. I am knowing that any minute now an attack could come. And as I've already mentioned, sometimes these books, they struggle with being a little too slow, especially compared to the rest of the series. And I think having that extra tension is something that is sorely needed. And another reason that I don't think these books would be the best starting place for the series is that you're not getting a sense of the pacing and the energy of the rest of the series. Because Cordelia is a much more passive, slow narrator than her son Miles. And so if you've only read these two Cordelia books, you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. But if you've read some Miles books and you get to some of the more slower paced Miles books, I feel like that prepares you well for Cordelia's books. In the end, I gave both Shards of Honor and Barriar five stars, though it was a close thing for both of them. And these novels' book tone is uranium blue, which means they are character focused and intellectual. And quick announcement, I have a patron book club. Two dollars a month, and this is the book we're reading next. And if you would like to join the patrons, we have such awesome perks as early access to my videos, bonus videos and extended cuts only for patrons, book recommendations, and merch. Thank you!